Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with Dr. Seth Letterman this morning. He's a co-founder, CEO, and chairman of Tonics Pharmaceuticals Holding Corporation. And he's joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning to discuss their COVID-19 vaccine program. Welcome to the program, Dr. Letterman. Thank you for having me on. As I said, of course, you are co-founder, CEO, and chairman of Tonics Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Give us a brief background about your area of expertise, and then let's talk about this COVID-19 vaccine program. Thank you. Before Tonics, I was a professor at Columbia Medical School and an immunologist. I did basic research on immunology, and I've always been interested in Edward Jenner's vaccine against smallpox. Mm -hmm. And Edward Jenner's vaccine that he discovered in around 1800 ended up eradicating smallpox. We at Tonics are working with a vaccine that we think is very close to what Edward Jenner used. And we have modified it to create a vaccine to protect against COVID-19. Is this something that is derived from disease itself or is this something that um, we've made uh, synthetically? Excellent question. We made the virus synthetically based on the sequence of a virus that is believed from evolution to have be close to what Edward Jenner used. Mm -hmm. But viruses themselves are very simple creatures. It's not really clear whether they're alive or not. So a virus's DNA is essentially the virus. So this is a virus and We did make it, but there's really no difference between a synthetically made virus and a virus that is found in the environment. If a vaccine is made with this synthetic virus, are we sure that the the actual virus will respond in the way that we want it to as a vaccine based on not being derived from the virus itself? Yes, because the um, since Edward Jenner did his experiments in, as I said, about 1800, this Edward Jenner's vaccine has been given to more humans on earth than any other vaccine. It was the first vaccine. And as I said, it eradicated smallpox, the first and only disease ever to be eradicated. So the number of people who receive the vaccine is hard to measure. The number of lives it saved is inestimable the entire face of the earth in terms of the the population of the earth would be completely different um, if smallpox had allowed to uh, continue as an endemic disease. So there's more known about Jenner's vaccine than any other vaccine. A, a virus, a live virus itself, really is completely copied by the DNA of the live virus. So there's no difference once a synthetic vaccine has been made between that and a virus that you would find in in the wild. Will we have to create a, a new vaccine every year or at some in, in some intervals, just as we do every year for the regular flu shots with this COVID-19 vaccine that you're developing? That's an excellent question. We believe that because coronaviruses are relatively stable genetically, that it could be possible that our vaccine, which is uh, essentially a vaccine very similar to Edward Jenner's, but into which we've cloned in a piece of the COVID virus, So we believe that because COVID type viruses are genetically stable, that one vaccine could control this illness. And we we think ultimately COVID will be endemic in the human population and that the way it will be kept in check is through a childhood vaccine, very similar to the MMR or measles, mumps, rubella vaccine that that all children get or should get. And uh, the important way that MMR protects children, even through adulthood, from these terrible diseases is that it induces a long-term T 
T cell immunity. So we believe that our vaccine has the potential to provide that kind of long-term durable T cell immunity. So we believe that ultimately after testing validates this, that, that our vaccine or possibly someone else's vaccine could become a routine childhood vaccination. And it would not be likely necessary to change it from year to year. But what I think you are hearing about, about repetitive vaccinations, is that some of these faster vaccines that are being tested very quickly mm -hmm. appear to focus more on antibody type immunity as opposed to T cell immunity. And vaccines that only provide antibody type immunity might be have might have to be given repetitively for example every six months uh to uh, continue to provide protection where are you now as far as uh, the development of this vaccine well we are imminently starting monkey trials mm -hmm. to test the ability of our vaccine to protect against a challenge of the COVID virus. And we are also at the beginning of manufacturing development so that we believe that as the animal testing progresses and the manufacturing development progresses, that in the first half of next year, we expect to be in phase one human trials. Now, although this, this is your program, you are in collaboration with some others on this program. Is that not correct? Yes, and we have great partners. We are partnering on the manufacturing development with Fujifilm Diasynth in College Station, Texas. We are partnered on the certain aspects of the testing of the vaccine with Southern Research Institute in Birmingham, Alabama. And we have a very exciting collaboration with Columbia University on measuring the immune responses from people who have recovered from COVID. And the, the purpose for the Columbia investigation is so that we will be able to assess in detail how humans are responding to our vaccine to make sure that the kind of immune response that our vaccine is eliciting is the same or similar to the immune response that people make when they recover from COVID naturally. Well, where can our listeners get some more information about tonics online? Our website has a considerable amount of information. Our website is www tonics pharma t o n i x p h a r m a dot com well i appreciate you joining us here on health professional radio i'm hoping that we'll, we'll speak again in the future thank you for your interest neil it would be my pleasure to follow up with you well you've been listening to health professional radio i'm your host neil howard audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au you can also subscribe to the podcast on itunes Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.